here is going to be the start of part five of the trailer build and um, I'm in the middle of making new bolts and somebody said uh, thread it before you bend it so I kind of laughed because I wasn't going to do that <laughs> Who knows who that was, too? Uh, no, what I did was bent these. I got all these U-bolts that I made. Made four of them. And right there's one of them. And it started out with a piece of black rod like that that had black, heavy, black, thick paint on it probably powder coat or something like that but anyway it started off that way and I bent it and the way I done it I stuck it in to where it's about that long I wanted to give myself a lot of extra and let me put you down here where you can see I did I started out with the little extra put it in the vise and bent it at a 45 or a 90 degree angle and then I cut this piece off of one of the pieces of scrap I had here and then put it in the vise let's see where the hell did I do that um, put it in the vise just like that but this was over here like that so basically it ended up like that right there and this is where I put the jaw and the jaw just happened to miss in between here so I was able to put it in there and then bend this side down all right well the reason I bend them before I thread them is because I like my threads to be exactly the same I don't like this threads down to here on one side and only threads on this side because you bend it in the wrong place so I'm going to show you how I do my U-bolts. It's not like I make these every day, so the way I'm doing it, I like doing it that way. So, uh, I made two new plates like this, but I want to show you whoever done this had no attention to detail, just didn't give a shit. I mean, look at the angle of that cut. And, you know, he didn't even get the holes uniform. So I went and made these plates. Now the same thickness, quarter inch steel. And uh, made some new ones. So I've got two new ones. And um, now... My U bolts will go in there. Just like so. Same thing with this side. And now I've got my U-bolt system. So there's one down. Now I've got to thread these two. What I've done is I've marked that at an inch and a half. That way I've got just a couple extra threads left if I need to crank down on a little bit more. So uh, you got to remember I'm gonna have a I got a lock washer that's going on it also, and uh, we'll show you how I've done that.
Now, I realized after I had used this that this axle right here, let me start off by saying this axle is an uh, inch and a quarter wide. Well, this is an inch and three sixteenths or three eighths. So I didn't realize that when I made these. So these are actually a sixteenth of an inch bigger on each side like that so what I did I made a bunch of these these ain't the ones out of PVC and I'm just gonna put them on each side of that and that will take up the slack in between there just like so and I think that'll work it keeps it centered if it wears out replace it all it is is PVC pipe so but I've made a, eight of these and I've painted them and they're drying right now I've got primer on them right now uh, I think I'm gonna go with black on it too um, but anyway let's go over to the um, Vice, and I'll show you my process of threading. All right, now we're over here at the vise, and I've got my one inch socket, I've got my T handle. And I've got my 3 8 tap. And I've got my oil. Now, what I've done, and I'll turn this around so you guys can see it. The two marks, I put it just above the jaws of the vise. Just like so. Now, I've tapered each end to allow the threader to go on a little easier than normal. So I'll stick it in there and I'm not going to lock it. Uh, the reason being is because I'm going to have to take the handle off a couple times. So to start off with, I'm just going to push down on this and try to keep it as centered as possible. And I'm using my handle here as a guide to keep it straight because that handle comes right above on both sides and it's straight. So I'm just using the handle as a little uh, guide to make sure I'm straight. So I'm just push down on it hard, get the first grip, and then I'm gonna come around and do that one more time. three times I've done that so it was probably a quarter of a turn each time so I turned it three quarters of a turn then I'm gonna squirt a couple drops of oil in there and then we're just gonna ratchet it on there And it'll stop when it's done. And then we're going to take it all the way down to where it's hard to turn. All right, now we're gonna back it out. Now, we're gonna empty 
empty out all the shavings that it, it accumulated. And then drop it on the floor. Alright, so now we're going to restart that in the opposite direction. So I started from this end because that's your starter side. So now that we've got the starter side, if you notice, the threads don't go all the way down to the vise. So we're going to turn it around on the tail side of the die to get it started. And then we're going to run it down all the way. Let some oil go down the threads. Now it's going to be really easy until you hit that part where the thread didn't go all the way. Alright, now it's starting to hit. And there it is. threads are all the way down to the vise. But it looks to me like this one needs to come up a little higher. Yeah. And then we're just going to repeat that process on the other side. And there you have it, how to make a U-boat. 
where the threads are straight, straight across from each other. So, I'll complete the other one off camera and we'll put it back, put, it, put this one together. Alright guys, now we get to put this one back together. So, we'll put that together. Now I have to take it back apart, of course. I gotta, I gotta get a set of nuts for it because none of these match. I was able to find five of these big heavy ones. This one, this one, and actually, yeah, five of them. But I couldn't find three more of them, so I'm gonna have to go buy some that match. I can't be having mixed match nuts and bolts on this thing. <laughs> I don't work that way. Yeah, I'd look at that job and think, what an idiot. So I'm not going to be the one that does what I don't like to see. <laughs> so there you have the U-bolts and the plates. And we got all the bushings that I just painted with black hammered is the only thing I had left and uh, once they're dry they'll go on here on both sides of this uh, axle and then I made these two pieces to go on the red part of the uh, spring. And I'll show you here as soon as I get this, I forgot to get this off before I started the video. I meant to have that prepared. So now I'm wasting y'all's time. Now, the reason I'm using this is, first of all, that's what I had to my disposal. I just took a piece of pipe and put it in there. Now, this slides in and out of there really easy with a little play. But it won't by the time the bolt is in there. And the reason I say that is because this is the size bolt that we got to use and it won't go in there unless you drive it on there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hacksaw and I'm going to cut I'm going to cut right here just like this So then when I go in with the bolt, I have to drive the bolt in. It's going to spread this, and then it's going to tighten up in there and give it a better, better uh, bushing. Now, the reason I'm going diagonal like that is because if you go straight across, and let's say that thing gets turned around to where that cut, is straight across lines up with where the stress point of the bushing is and starts spreading it and wearing it where the uh, the split is so you want to go diagonally all the way around in a spiral motion that way uh, when it spreads 
it's pretty even all the way around and this this groove's not going to ride on that stopping point because eventually that nut is going to ride you know, if I can find a bolt that I can show you how what I mean um, one that'll fit in there uh, let's imagine this is a thread like that if that split was to find its way where the pressure is it would just keep splitting it and, and wearing it and you really wouldn't have much of a bushing after so long so if you do the diagonal thing then when it spreads it kind of evens the the crack out so that it doesn't rest in that crack it's the best way i know to explain it so and before we do all this we're going to put grease in around everything and um, the only thing that I'm worried about with using plastic is are these two pieces of plastic going to cause a squeak uh, once the grease wears thin and the plastic starts hitting each other I'm wondering if it's going to squeak but we'll find out if it does it's as simple as pull the bolt back out and get rubber bushings for it so we're going to try this and see what happens the only thing left to do and i gotta wait till i get paid is go get me two bolts and some axle grease or, or bearing grease and once once i get those two uh i got a brush underneath the trailer where the springs are going to mount so that once I get the springs and axle mounted, I don't have to fight around the springs and stuff to paint it. And then once I've got it back on its wheels, then I'll go and uh, paint the rest of the trailer. So, should have done that before I put the wood down, but oh well. Shit happens, right? <laughs> so there you have the shackle springs or, or spring u-bolts or whatever you want to call it and plates made for the uh, trailer so I don't think there's anything else I need to cover except I painted the two nuts because they were starting to rust and I said well it ain't gonna hurt to have paint on it anyway it's gonna be packed in grease so uh, then I gotta get some caps. Forgot about those. I gotta get some rubber caps to keep dirt out of here. So that I can just pull them off, put a little bit of grease to it, put it back on. And uh, that'll conclude the uh, part five. Did I, I, I think I said four when I first started this video. I don't remember anymore. I'm getting senile. Y'all don't pay no attention to me. Uh, if you do, you'll be lost. Anyway, you guys have a good one. Later.